This is a painting of a steam locomotive pulling a train of cars. It's by William Gardoski, and if you like it, you can buy prints online. This particular locomotive is a big boy. It was built for the Union Pacific Railway in the early 1940s and was used for many years thereafter. It could generate a force up to 602,000 newtons. Each engine, along with its tender, the tender is the car behind that carried the fuel for the engine, uh, that combination of engine and tender has a mass of 570,000 kilograms. And our question, our first question is, what acceleration would be possible for the engine and tender, assuming that it's not pulling the train of cars behind it? So let's take a look at that calculation. We're going to use Newton's second law. A is F net over M. And the net force is 602,000 newtons. We're ignoring any friction. We're just assuming that the friction is insignificant for this problem. And the total mass is 570,000 kilograms. We pull up the calculator, 602,000 divided by 570,000 gives us 1.056 meters per second squared, which since we have uh, two significant digits only on the mass, we'll call it 1.1 meters per second squared. That's the acceleration of this engine pulling its tender, but nothing else. And then our follow-up question is, with that acceleration, how much time would it take to reach 25 meters per second? So let's look at our equation for acceleration. Now keep in mind that this equation we're talking about now is the definition of acceleration. Whereas our previous equation for acceleration is Newton's second law. How does the acceleration depend on a force applied and the mass of the object? So we have two different equations for acceleration. Now, in this case, we already know the acceleration from Newton's second law. It's 1.1 meters per second squared. So we know, we know the A, and we want to reach 25 meters per second from rest, so we know delta V. We're going to solve for delta T. Delta T is equal to delta V over A. So we're going to say 25 meters per second divided by 1.056 meters per second squared. I am carrying the extra sig fig since I had those written down. But in the end, I'm going to calculate, uh, I'm going to round to two sig figs again. So we have 25 divided by 1.056 gives us 23.67, which we will go ahead and we will round to 24 seconds. And we have one last question here, which is, if in fact there were a train of cars behind the locomotive, what would be the resulting acceleration? We're going to use Newton's second law again. Just like we did for part A, we're going to have A is F net over M. We still have 602,000 newtons, but the mass is now not 570,000 kilograms. The mass is 570,000 kilograms plus 10 times 120,000 plus 1.2 million kilograms. So we have 1,770,000 kilograms as being the total mass. 10 cars plus the mass of uh, the engine and the tender. So our mass, 
uh, and 70,000 kilograms, and that's going to give us an acceleration of 0.34 meters per second squared. How much time are we going to need to reach 25 meters per second? Delta T is equal to delta V over A. 25 meters per second divided by 0.34 meters per second squared. Gives us 74 seconds. 